Rendering in real time in Cinema 4D is pretty amazing. But you ever wished your IPR was bigger? I mean, much, much bigger. I mean, what about full screen? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set this up and I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks to make sure you're rendering as fast as possible. All right, let's head on in and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and you probably have a layout similar to this. You have your viewport, your IPR dock nearby, whether it's Octane or Redshift or Arnold. Uh, you probably have some windows that you use a lot. I have the node editor, render settings, render queue, things I use a lot around it. Um, but if you're like me, you want this to be bigger and bigger. You want your IPR sometimes to like maybe go full screen or like really zoom in to see um, uh, maybe high res textures when you're when you're trying out different textures, maybe uh, all the detailed lighting or check grain and things like that. But it can be really difficult to kind of resize all this stuff. So recently I saw uh, Chad Ashley use this Redshift Start IPR and he's basically combined his IPR and his viewport into one big render window. And I found myself really digging this. It has its pros and cons, but I wanted to show you how I set it up, show you how to get it really big and full screen and show you some of the render settings and details to make it work even faster. So uh, first thing I did was I removed the IPR. So. This will combine my uh, viewport and my IPR into the same window. And if your layout's like mine, it'll do the same. So I'm just gonna right click here in the IPR, undock it and delete it. So now I have this combined look and I'm gonna click on Redshift menu right above the viewport and click on start IPR. It's gonna spin up the GPU and we're gonna get our result really quickly here. So. This is really responsive here in the viewport and already uh, I like this, especially in look dev mode, maybe after I built most of my scene and I'm really working on the lighting and the materials. Uh, one thing I'm seeing, I need a focus null because if I zoom away, my focus is uh, uh, all messed up. So let's go grab this camera. And um, if you have our scripts installed, you could just click on foca focal point null, uh, grab the place tool and just click wherever you want uh, to be in focus. And now no matter where you move your camera, that should stay in focus. Okay. So now we got that. All right. Um, so we have that we're ready to go. And what if you want your, uh, what if you want these black bars moved? So, uh, if you have the lens scripts installed, just click this little button right here. Uh, you can find those in scripts if you have them installed through, um, Grayscale Gorilla Hub. So now we have all this space. Okay, this means a couple things. First of all, I could zoom in, I have all this extra room, and it also, for me, allows me to see, okay, what does this look like really tall? Maybe it, I wanna crop something for my phone. Um, I, I can now experiment and say, well, that's kind of a cool look for a tall crop. And I could even come into the lighting and you know rotate stuff around and get really fast response right here in the viewport. And it works pretty quick. And if I wanna go to square mode, um, all I have to do is grab the edge and drag it out. It has to do this little recalculation dance, um, but it's not too long. And now I'm allowed to uh, kind of recrop and find maybe a square frame and a square look. So a lot of cool angles on this. Um, render. By the way, if you want this scene file, you can go grab it in your Grayscale Gorilla downloads. Uh, this is ready to use in production. You could delete these trays or use them in your work. Um, or if you, even if you just want to learn and look at all the render settings, you can go grab this in your account right now. We'll put a link down below. Okay. So, uh, what else can we do? Well, what if we want this even bigger? Well, let's just delete all this stuff and use all of this for a render. Like will the machine keep up? Let's see. Well, I made a layout just to do that. So I made this uh, layout called Redshift Clean. I essentially removed all those other tabs just so I could jump between like, hey, maybe I'm setting up a scene, I'll move it back. And then I can go to this mode and really get something super uh, large. And you can see it is real, still really responsive. And um, it's, it's working out pretty nice. So what what is really um, letting this be so fast? Well, one thing is um, I'm on a, a Mac M3 Ultra and uh, this chip has been screaming. Now this is not as fast as uh, the fastest Nvidia chips, uh, but man, for a Mac and all the other features I get on a Mac, it is really uh, impressive. Um, if you're on Windows, you can still do all this stuff, uh, but what else is really helping? Well, some of these are in the settings here. So uh, if it's too slow for you, or uh, it's just not getting the response you want, head on into this Redshift menu, go to options, 
And first thing we'll talk about is called undersampling. So I'll turn it to zero. Zero undersampling essentially is trying to keep up with you moving your um, scene around and it's rendering uh, as fast as it can. And you can see it's a little choppy. This is a simple scene, but you can see it's slowed down compared to what it is. Uh, and if you're working with something more complex and a lot of clones and all that stuff, you definitely will want to take this down. So I'm gonna go to two. Now, when I move my camera, you can see it is refreshing much faster, but at a lower resolution. And it's also not doing that denoising stuff either. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this allows me to move my camera much quicker um, and with a lot more feedback. And then when I let go, it jumps into like, okay, full rendering speed mode. Okay, so let's go look at resolution as well. I'm working at 75%, but you could essentially uh, turn up and down the resolution in this viewport to help your GPU along. So if you have a slower GPU, you could just reduce the resolution. It'll render much faster, just like reducing resolution always does. Uh, but you could crank this up and up depending on uh, what your graphics card is and what other things your computer's doing at the time. I'm gonna crank this up to 100%. And man, look at all that detail. Um, I'm just super impressed. And again, when I move my camera, it allows me to move it pretty quickly. And then as soon as I let go, it starts cleaning it up right away. And, and this is how I've been using this. Um, I'll find myself in, in like look dev mode and saying like, okay, what if we try a different material or try some different lighting? I'll find myself saying, uh, okay, let's, um, let, let's look at this angle. So this angle is really cool. It's got some nice angle, you know, angles on the wood, but the shadow, uh, I want to, tweak it. So let me grab my light controller. Let me just rotate this around and add a little bit more shadow in the front. Love that. Okay. I love that I could do this in such a large window and get really pretty quick feedback on all this. Um, what's another good example? Well, what if I uh, am really liking a shot, but I say, okay, that concrete's cool, but let's try a different one. So um, we'll open up Grayscale Gorilla Studio and type in concrete and this is something I do all the time, like last minute texture changes. Let's try this one. So this one's got a bunch of detail. Let's send it to Cinema 4D and open up our uh, material window and you can see it is right here, ready to go. So let's find that floor. It's doing the little resolution dance, but now it's ready. Here's the plane, here's the texture. Let's just drag the new one on the old one and pretty quickly we get an update. So I love all these little pitted holes in the in the concrete. Let's zoom in, you can see all the nice detail. Um, love this, but what if you want it even bigger? What if you're like, yo, just take my whole window over and let me move around and let me, let me play with this. Well, this is where you could do this magical little trick. So uh, Cinema 4D has this built right in. All you do is you hit control tab and any window that you're hovered over will go full screen. So this works in the object menu. Control tab, control tab to get back. It works uh, anywhere, your materials, uh, but of course it also works right here in your viewport. So I'm gonna uh, make sure my mouse is over the viewport. I'm gonna hit control tab on my keyboard and it's gonna have to do that little resolution dance and it's doing some recalculating here. I think it's maybe redoing some of the geometry and stuff like that for the displacement. But once it does it all, Oh my gosh, I am almost full screen. And this is um, relatively responsive. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh, I, uh, I've i been just having such a blast doing this. Like, look at how beautiful this is. You know what makes me want? I want like an almost straight on squared off thing. I may have to go back into my camera to get the settings just right and make it perfectly flat. But let me see if I could do that. That's kind of a cool angle. What if we zoom in? And this in full screen and full resolution, like this is super high res, has just been mind blowing. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I'm gonna date myself here, but you know, we were, <laughs> I remember waiting for all my, uh, not even buckets for my like lines to fill up and now I got this full screen. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of these settings here. Um, that help do all this. So uh, let's go back to, uh, I'm gonna hit control tab and I'm gonna go all the way back to this uh, layout I made called IPR only. So this is just IPR on the right and some of the render settings we're gonna go over right now. So uh, first of all, um, 
there is a lot of denoising happening that is allowing for this full screen to look so good so quickly. So let me just turn off this denoising. I'm using the OIDN denoising, and this is getting faster every version of uh, Redshift and Cinema 4D. And it's been really, really fast lately. And you can see what it does. Without it, uh, when I reframe, it'll stay kind of noisy and then it cleans up slowly. You can still see some grain here. And it's, you know, calcul still calculating. And na just now maybe it's, it's cleaned up, okay? Uh, but with the denoising on, almost right away, it cleans up the uh, noise and you essentially are trading off detail for uh, less noise. And very quickly it, it calculates um, and gives you all this detail that you really want. So if you haven't been messing around with OIDN, uh, especially if you're on a Mac, I highly recommend it. If you're on NVIDIA card, there's uh, an option called uh, Optics or OPTX. Oh man, did I mess that one up or what? You let me know how to say that in the comments. Uh, OptiX, I'm gonna go with that one. So uh, mess with that. That is uh, much faster if you have an NVIDIA card and, and it looks really, really great. I've been using this in animation. In fact, a lot of uh, animations that you've seen from Grayscale Gorilla with some of our new glass and liquid materials have been using this. And so it, it, it uh, works really well. It doesn't take a ton of time to render and um, it's really stable. So this is doing a lot of the hard work when it comes to cleaning this up so fast. But again, we're also um, all sitting around with these nice video cards and that is obviously doing a lot of the hard work. So I might do a deeper dive video in this denoising. So let me know down in the comments if that's interesting to you and I could start to uh, experiment a little bit more with this. Uh, but let me know down below what you think of this video if you use it. Uh, again, you could grab the scene file if you wanna play along. And if you end up using this in your work, let me know any tips and tricks you have for me because I'm still learning as well. Don't forget if you want that scene file, you can grab it down below and let me know if you've been using this in your work or if you have any tips and tricks for me. I'm always learning as well. Thank you always for watching this video and we hope to see you in the next one. Happy rendering everybody. Bye-bye.